So you've been studying the endocrine system and some of the key questions that come up are similar to these, so let's have a look. So your first question might be, what term is used to describe glands that secrete hormones? It's endocrine glands. They produce and secrete hormones. The next question is, how do these glands differ from those that do not secrete hormones? Well, in endocrine glands, there are no ducts. The hormones are secreted directly into the blood. No tubes, no ducts. Explain why the pancreas is described as a dual function gland. So how come it has two roles? Well, firstly, it produces and secretes the hormone insulin directly into the blood. That's an endocrine function. And then it also produces and secretes enzymes, digestive enzymes, into the pancreatic duct. That's an exocrine function. So it has an endocrine and an exocrine function. So the next question is, what is the chemical nature of most hormones? Well, most of them are proteins, so that's what you would answer. And you just know that there are some, particularly the sex hormones, that are steroids. Uh, they're made from cholesterol, a type of lipid. Next question. In the case of two named hormones secreted in the body, number one, state the precise location of the gland that secretes it, and number two, a function of that hormone. The first hormone is thyroxine. We know a lot about it, so always use thyroxine. It's produced by the thyroid gland located in the neck and thyroxine controls or regulates metabolism. So for the second of our named hormones, we're going to pick thyroid stimulating hormone. It's produced by the pituitary gland, the master gland located in the brain at the base of the skull. And the function of thyroid stimulating hormone is that it causes the production of thyroxine in the thyroid gland in the neck. So next question, in the case of one named hormone, don't forget to pick which one you want to use. Number one, give a deficiency symptom. So what happens when you've too little? Number two, give a symptom of excess when you've got too much. And number three, give a corrective measure for either. So state you're going to fix deficiency and how or state you're going to fix excess and how. So the named hormone is thyroxine and let's discuss deficiency of thyroxine. So if a child has too little thyroxine or isn't producing thyroxine, they can have physical and mental developmental issues. And this is referred to as cretinism in children. In adults, the symptoms of having too little thyroxine would be weight gain, hair loss, fluid retention, fatigue. And together, these are known as myxedema in adults. Sometimes adults can get swelling of the thyroid gland known as a goiter. So what is the treatment for having too little or being deficient in thyroxine? Well, you can take thyroxine as a medication and if you are deficient in it because you are lacking iodine in your diet, you can take additional iodine. So what are the symptoms of having too much thyroxine in excess? Well, the symptoms are anxiety, nervousness, weight loss, bulging eyes and together these are known as Graves' disease. And the treatment for excess thyroxine is basically to either take radioactive iodine, which will destroy part of the gland, or surgery to remove part of the thyroid gland. Next question. Explain why hormonal responses are slower than nervous responses. Well, hormones are chemical messengers and they're transported in the blood, so it takes them longer to get to where they're going to have the effect. Whereas the nervous response is electrical, it's sent by nerves and they're made up of nerve cells, which are adapted to sending those electrical impulses really quickly. Describe how a feedback mechanism works in the human endocrine system. So we're going to discuss how the production of one hormone is inhibited by levels of another. And remember the hands, the way we learned it. So we're going to use the two examples of thyroxine and thyroid stimulating hormone. When thyroxine levels are low, thyroid stimulating hormone is produced by the pituitary gland and it travels to the thyroid gland and causes the production of thyroxine. Thyroxine levels will increase and when they do get back to normal levels, it inhibits the production of thyroid stimulating hormone by the pituitary gland. So thyroxine levels are inhibiting the production of thyroid stimulating hormone, negative feedback. Last question. Give two examples of hormone supplements. It's not good enough just to state insulin. You have to say that it's administered to treat a deficiency when the pancreas does not produce enough or any insulin. Well, then the patient is given insulin injections. So it's there to treat diabetes. The second example would be the contraceptive pill, which can contain oestrogen and progesterone, those two female hormones, and it's there to prevent pregnancy. So give a full explanation. What are the hormones and what will they do and what do they treat? So these are just some sample questions. You could be asked anything connected to the content. So make sure you're using your book and you're doing lots of extra questions at the end of the chapter. Best of luck.